Hey guys, so today we're going to be getting started with the Pine 64 A64 LTS. I'm actually going to be walking you through a process in order to install Nextcloud as a hidden service. I've gotten a lot of requests for this and I wanted to fulfill some of those requests. First thing we're going to do is we're going to need to look up specifically LTS images. There's a RAM difference in the other A64, Pine 64 board, and the one that is not an LTS or a So Pine image will not boot, so we're going to need to be sure we have a So Pine compatible image. We're going to be going with something I found recently a shortcut to get the Nextcloud set up, and that is part of the reason I created the Diet Pi image. So go ahead and get Diet Pi. If you're using another single board computer, get a DiaPi image or use a single board computer that is compatible with DiaPi. Because we're going to be working with DiaPi in order to jumpstart this process and I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. First thing you're going to need to do is download an image and then flash it to the SD card. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already downloaded it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the dd command. I'm going to go dd if equals for image file equals and then diet pi and we're going to burn that. And then of equals and then what that's going to do is show us the location. And before we do this, we're going to need to find out exactly which block device is our micro SD card. And you got to be really careful using the DD command. You don't want to flash over the wrong partition. What we see here is XVDJ. It matches up with the size of our micro SD card. So we're going to be using that in the flash section. You can also use etcher at this point. You just want to make sure you select the proper uh, block device for your flashing of your image. So let's go ahead and do that. DD if equals and then the diet pi of equals and then slash dev slash in my case it's xvdj. You might also have some help by running d message d m e s g. That can also show you the SD card immediately at, right after you have placed it into your computer. BS equals 12M. We're going to speed it up this process a bit. Status equals progress. And once that's done flashing, we'll move on to the next step. And that next step will entail inserting the finished flashed micro SD card in our Pine64 LTS A64. Now that our image is finished flashing, we have a ready to use micro SD card. And all we need to do at this point is to slip that micro SD card right into the slot found right here under the EMMC printing. So when you grab your board, go ahead and before you plug it up to that power supply, insert your ready to use micro SD card right under the EMMC with the pins, the metal, metallic pins facing upward and at that point once that is securely inserted you should feel a spring click when you push that micro SD card in and then you can go ahead and plug in your Ethernet and then plug in your power supply and at that point the Diet Pi image should connect right to the internet for you and we're going to go ahead and power it on and then we're going to SSH over in and from there we're going to set everything up for our next cloud hidden service. Now that we've inserted our micro SD card and powered on our Pine64 LTS A64 board with the ethernet 
hooked into it so we can get a network connection. Now we should SSH over so we can configure everything and install Nextcloud and then convert it to a hidden service. So the first thing you're going to want to do is something like nmap and then um, sn and then for example if this is your you know IP address you'll want to scan for it so something like this would return all the online machines and this is how you determine the IP address I've already gotten mine so I'm gonna go ahead and SSH diet pi is the login at in my case this is the IP address now I can enter the password and I'm gonna enter the default so pine pass exclamation point and now I'm logged in so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to get super user privileges and I'm gonna update in just a moment but first off in fact let's go ahead and update first And then we're going to install Nextcloud. And like I mentioned, this is a shortcut to Nextcloud as a hidden service. It's something I figured out recent, relatively recently. And in the past, I was using um, installing, you know, N servers and Apache and SQL servers. SQL servers and I did all that from scratch and now I have a method in order to speed up this process and I thought I'd share it with you guys part of the reason I created the diapi image for the LTS now that we've updated let's go ahead and check out diapi software we're gonna go ahead and look through the software and find next cloud and here we are number 114 spacebar will select it go down tab to OK hit OK now what we're gonna do is go down to install and we're going to go ahead and select OK. It's a good idea to update first and to make sure you have all the repositories in the right place and make sure nothing's out of date. It's going to go ahead and install all the prerequisites for this. It's going to really speed up this process for us to get Nextcloud as a hidden service running. Now, securing it is going to be up to you. I'm simply running you through the basic process for the fastest route to get a Nextcloud as a hidden service installed. Now, installing the database that's relied upon for Nextcloud. You can, of course, skip my shortcut here and go ahead and install everything from scratch you can also find certain scripts out there that might be able to install Nextcloud for you just be careful what you select certain things are built for Debian based other things may be built for other operating systems just be sure you have something compatible with your system and the diapi method is the quickest route but of course diapi is not meant to be secured by default that that part's completely up to you i've never claimed that diapi was meant to be secure by default it's meant to be convenient and sometimes we want to play around with different types of packages before we set everything up from scratch so this can be a great operating system for you to take a look at just so you can play around with different types of services because it offers a large variety of easy to install services that are all set up but of course you're gonna to need to secure there's a couple different things like for example Gitia you're gonna to need to reset up in order in certain ways and change and restrict certain access 
So you're going to want to take a look at your security as well once you take advantage of some of the streamlining that's offered by Diapi. Now we're installing the PHP great thing about DiaPi is it does allow you to try out so many different applications and servers without having to compile everything from scratch just to try it out and you might want to try and integrate this I thought there could be some unique ways some of the services could possibly be integrated with Lura and the Pinadio project in some fashion As you can see, it's now using curl to download the latest Nextcloud. We can go ahead and customize everything after we've installed it. And at any point in time, we can make that conversion over to the Torified Hidden Service Nextcloud. And then also restrict, of course, the local connections and the remote connections on the clear web. This way, we only have an onion address. now added it to our system D services so that the next cloud services will all start at every boot okay looks like we have next cloud installed let's go ahead and check it out and just ensure that everything is up and running we're going to use the IP address then we're going to do slash next cloud and as long as that shows up, awesome. So the next cloud has been installed. This is just over ClearWeb right now. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to change it over to a hidden service. What we're going to need to do is open our terminal. Now what we need to do is install Tor. apt install Tor Y flag for yes. Then we're going to configure it to redirect to an onion service. Now what we need to do is edit Tor's configuration. And we're going to add port 80 to a Tor onion and it's going to create that for us. At this point, we can go down and use one of the examples and simply replace it. Here we go. Here's an example right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're enabling port 80, Tor Hidden Service. And in fact, in case you're not aware, you can add extra ports. So say I want to use this onion address it's going to generate to have SSH access as well. You can do that, but keep in mind that everyone you give the onion address to will also be able to access that SSH. But otherwise, what's be the beauty in this is you don't need to do any port forwarding if you use an onion URL for SSH and remote login. So we're just going to stick with the web server right now in order to enable it as a Tor hidden service on the next cloud that's already running. Very simple to do. We'll save that and then we'll simply restart Tor. To restart Tor, first you'll just do system control stop Tor, then you'll do system control start Tor. And you can also use the restart command, but sometimes the restart command acts a little too fast and it doesn't get a chance to generate everything. So best case scenario is give it a couple seconds between the stopping and the starting. And at that point, you'll have an onion address.
one thing about DiaPi is it likes to use a different directory than most systems do. So we're going to go ahead and paste that into the actual config file that DiaPi pays attention to. At this point, we just simply paste it down here. Now, we'll restart Tor once again. Now we'll check our journal control, just the end of it, and see what happens with generating. In fact, we can check if the new onion address has been generated by looking in bar lib tor and hidden service. And it looks like it has. It's generated our new host name. That's going to be our onion address. Now we can simply do cat hidden service slash hostname and we'll have our new onion. Simple as that. You've now created your own next cloud as a hidden service. Of course, there is a lot more to this than just creating it. You need to know what you're doing in securing it. I suggest taking a look at some of my earlier videos on Nextcloud as a hidden service. There's a lot of different edits I make personally and I'm not going to go through all that in this tutorial. Let's go ahead and check it out in our browser. So now to test that out we're going to go ahead and put our onion address and then simply type Nextcloud. And if something shows up we've successfully created a Nextcloud hidden service. Boom! Looks like we have one. So that's it. That's a shortcut that I'm showing you today. Now, like I mentioned, you need to be very careful if you have a server that is out on the open internet. This is not secured yet. You still need to do securing of your server and we'll go over some of those things in future videos. For now, I just wanted to answer one of the most common requests I've had. How do I get a Nextcloud as a hidden service? And I also wanted to do this as a tutorial for the Pine64 LTS. That's what I have today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe this video. And if you want to support this, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And if you have any questions on the steps that we've shown so far to get up to this point, leave a comment below, and I'll be happy to try and help. That's all I have today, guys. I'll be back later with more on Linux and protecting your privacy.